we're going to have a look at the final race uh, on the program now, race uh, number 10. We're back on the turf for the last. It's a class two, but a, a 70 to a 90 rating handicap here. Sylvester is out. Would have been a big chance. Maybe Precise Express is. Vincent Ho makes the straight switch there on boards. So, so yeah, a little bit um, different with the 70 to 90. So there's a lot of horses coming up in class. Circuit three heads the list. Jerry Chow taking a couple of pounds off his uh, back for Ben O'Young. Got Navas too, who was um, jumping from barrier four last about finishing fourth to Golden Scenery. Gets barrier 14 this time around. Shining Gem up in class. Keefe up in class for his last start win from barrier 14. Gets five this time around. Captain wins. Zach Pert will jump on board there. He hasn't done well at the gates. Barrier 10 for him as well. Circuit Stella, Private Rocket, Decisive 12. Gluck Racer all up in class, as is. Viva Hunter. They take the blinkers and the tongue tie off him as well. Manfred Mann and Matthew Chadwick from barrier number three. So the speed map first here, uh, Mark, for this uh, final event. And we're saying the tempo should be good through the early stages. Where do they all land? We've got uh, Navas too. He'll go back to last from his outside gate. So we know that uh, he likes to be safe for one run at them. So that's him there on the outside of Master Montaro. He will be hoping that the speed is good. Decisive 12 is going to set it up and they have been riding him forward and back throughout the season. Viva Hunter behind him. Keefe's going to get a much better run than what he did last time when he was three wide the trip and one. But the scratching of Sorvestia, Paul, the four, what did that do to the speed and the speed map? Well, not much change because Precise Express actually does a similar thing to Sylvester does and uh, he likes to go forward, he's run fourth or sort of been in fourth or fifth in the, in the running in his last couple of starts so I think they just basically changed places there so it hasn't really changed the speed map at all. Decisive 12 has got an inside draw and up to 1400, that's why I think he'll leave. OK, all right, uh, but a few trapped out wide there. We'll have a look at some replays in a moment. We're going to start off though with Keefe and his last start win as we speak with Joe Marrera. Joe Keithy is uh, your mount in the final race on Sunday afternoon. Um, talk us through that win last time because that was quite impressive. It was very impressive. Um, you see, he, his previous run, he ran really well. Like, um, had to make it tough, took them a good horse to beat him. And last time when he was really giving the best shot, being a little bit fitter, having two runs on his belt, he was then able to produce what he's got best. And so by saying that, I can also indicate it that he's, he's a kind of horse that he's still got a lot of more upsides. I mean, he can still improve a lot. Um, that's a need anyway, because he's coming up in class, so he's going to challenge stronger horses. But honestly, I, I believe he's up to that, and I'm, I'm looking forward to riding him on the weekend. Have you and the team been happy with him since that performance? Very much. He, I galloped him yesterday, and he, he gave me a good feel. So um, it's all about to see if at this stage of his campaign in Hong Kong, he's up to that quite yet or not. I believe he is and um, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully not to be wrong. Barriers always play a key part in racing here in Hong Kong. He's come into five from 14. I imagine when you saw that, you, you, your eyes must have lit up a little bit. I have no doubt about it. <laughs> when you get outside gates, it's, it's always hard, you know. And unfortunately, I got plenty of them lately. And it is what it is. This time, I got a better one, so I'm no doubt I'm very happy with it. Um, you mentioned up in grade. Now, this is a, a 70 to 90 rated race. Uh, just a three-year-old. Does he, does he find a, an opportunity here to go back-to-back? -back? I know it's a stronger race than last time, but that said, it certainly gives them all their chance. Yeah. Uh -huh. 70 to 90 is no doubt a weaker race than uh, 80 to 100. Um, so, of course, we are all extremely happy that he's having an opportunity to run in such a race, so then he's got a, a bigger chance of uh, making it back-to-back. -back. So, yeah, it, it's no doubt... a. Uh, a race that we would, we would hope to be ra race him at. Just the three-year-old, I mean, uh, he's obviously a horse with plenty of potential. Do you feel he's a horse who, who can sort of take that step into the sort of group company, perhaps, next next season? He does give me the feel that he can be. Uh, now, for you and Frankie, obviously, you guys have, uh, have got, you know, plenty of history. You've known each other for a long time. You might be able to do each other a favour here because, <laughs> for all, Frankie might have that trainer's championship wrapped up, possibly. Um, it'd be nice to to steer a winner home for him, of course, and what is a, an important part of the season. Of course it is. Uh, right a winner, it doesn't matter who it's going to be for, it's always important, and that's what we aim for. Frankie has given me some opportunity this season, which is ob obviously I'm very pleased. Would would be nice to get one week before the end of the season winning another race for him. And apparently we've got a horse that it's it's capable. Yeah, it's going to be an important winner for uh, for both, and that's uh, Keefe. Um, interesting as well, he's winning on the C plus three course. We're on the C plus three again this weekend. Let's have a look at his rivals, uh, those guys. Mark, we'll start off with the Precise Express, who's promoted into the field. 
Um, could he be a danger? He's coming back in trip, Andrew, from uh, his last four starts. He's won two from his last three, so he's in good form, but all of his victories have been over 1,600 metres. And even though he's going well, Paul, and putting it to all for St Paul's here, just thought might be a little sharp, the seven furlongs. Yeah, that, that, that was the key as well. And I just think he might be trapped a bit wide as well from his draw. He comes into a, a tricky draw there as well. There's some bit of speed underneath him. So, look, I'm happy just to watch him come through in this. OK. All right, Vincent Ho will be on board. And Vincent's uh, chasing the Tony Cruz Award as well. This is Shining Gem, uh, Paul. This was his uh, first win over the 1,400 uh, metres. Um, Derek on board and Derek back again uh, this weekend too. Yeah, so he's, he's been riding him, and another one that's in a bit of form, and he's drawn nicely. I don't think he'll be uh, too far away, but his previous wins have been over the 1,200. So he stretched out to the 1,400 metres. He sort of hadn't won in the past. He'd been placed a couple of times, but everything uh, went right for him on this day, and uh, he won nicely. I think he got the perfect run, though. I'm, I'm just, uh, I just want to see him in this race. He comes up with 135 pounds, even though he comes up in grade. As you said, it's a rating 90 to 70, so the weight's... Somewhat a little skew to what mm. you would expect for a horse going up in grade. So good enough to win last time, but meets a strong field here. Yeah, including, so we have a look, we've got three horses in this race. Beauty Fit, who's down here on the uh, the inside. The other horse is marked to look out for. Uh, Navis, two widest of all. He finishes in fourth. And uh, Winner Method, um, who's uh, never too far away, he eventually runs sixth here. Yeah. Navas 2 goes in. Um, Ruin Mai gets back on board. He's been on board for three of his seven victories. He's going to have to rely on plenty of speed and some luck, but he does have that devastating turn of speed. Paul, we saw two starts ago where he nearly beat Lucky Swayness. He runs fourth here in a blanket go. Good field that day, 135 pounds. He's got to carry an extra 12 for, than what he did in this fourth behind the golden scenery. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good run um, from him. He's just going to be a little bit further back, I thought. But he's, uh, he's a very capable horse. Uh, the other one, Beauty Fits, only won once this season. That was under a lower rating. Mm, OK, all right, so might need some speed then. Um, Navas too. What about uh, Circuit Stella? Uh, Paul, what are his chances here running fourth? Well, time? he'll get back. He'll, he'll want a bit of pace on, which he could get in this particular race. But this is a tough race, this one. Uh, Circuit Stella, um, look, I didn't include him in the end. Uh, this is at uh, Happy Valley. He's coming back now to Charlton. Yeah, this was 1650 as well. He starts have been... Some good, some bad since he's been here, but he draws nicely in two. And with the good tempo anticipated, I thought he might run home into some money. Mm. That's Tony Cruz and Luke Ferraris as well, who've teamed up recently for a few uh, good wins. Uh, we'll finish off, Mark, at the trials with uh, Viva Hunter here in the orange. Uh, wins the trial and uh, shining jam out wide here. He is indeed. Um, didn't have either of these in. I know you've got Viva Hunter in, Paul, with the blinkers and the tongue tie coming off. He switches back from uh, Happy Valley to Sha Tin and comes back to the 1,400 metres. Seems to be a horse with a really good attitude, though. Comes in well at the rates. Uh, he always tries as well. I think he's going to be from barrier three. He's going to be in the right position uh, as well. Here's one over 1,200. He's only had one go over the 1,400 at Chartin and was placed as well. Ran third off a rating of 54. But look, he's going going nicely, this horse, and he, he's going to get I think the race conditions in his favour. OK, all right. Uh, well, the mark says at the moment that Keith is uh, the favourite. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, Keithy looks tough to beat, but I do like the price around um, Viva Hunter. I, hopefully he starts some, close to this. He's 12 to 1 at the moment. So he's on top. Keithy in there for second, Navas too. Captain Wynn, uh, look, he always uh, goes well, cruises into the race, just doesn't finish it off, but is capable. 14, 7, 3 and 9. With Keithy. Big last time, as long as he's come through that run OK and he can back it up, it was good. He's trolled up super, just took him three runs to win his first race, expect him to go on with it. With Barrier 2 and the speed in the race circuit, Stella, he can come through the centre, whereas Navas 2 is going to have to loop the field. That's why the 10's in for second, the 3's in for third. And circuit 3 is a four-time course and distance winner. He's drawn Barrier 1, disappointed last time over the 1600, but he's never been strong at that trip. He'll like the drop back in distance. 7, 10, 3 and 1. Three and seven, the cue for me there in the final event. Navas two and Kifi.